here today. Yeah. What's up, Patrice? Patrice. What's up, everybody? How you doing? What's going on? You feeling safe today? What do you mean? Say, oh, from the uh, Dirty Arabs? Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do, man? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. What are you gonna do? You gonna... can't control them unless you act like unless you violate somebody's civil rights. Yeah. Well, yeah. Long I think you gotta to start doing some of that. Though. Live with them. I love racism. I want white people to be racist against me so I can be racist against everybody else. I don't want to stop it. <laughs> we were we were talking about that earlier, though. The whole white-black thing, black-white thing, whatever, however you want to say it, it's been knocked down again. Well, now we're all think? friends again. Well, not really, because I was listening to you guys complain about electronics, and that's just something niggas just don't do, <laughs> is sit around and go, customer service. I bought a light bulb that said 10 years. It only lasted 8.6, <laughs> so I called you a bunch of dicks. I couldn't believe y'all was in there talking about your computers with that much passion. Well, if you guys have a problem, you just steal a new one. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't. That's why I don't buy the, uh, the uh, warranty. I just, no, I, I I just want to buy a new computer, because black people already know. Know what's going on with this? Are it's people like, still buying those warranties? That is, White people. That is God. funny though, man. He just like all of a sudden. He completely made me feel like a stupid whitey. Oh, my God. Because I'm in there, yeah. and I know he's looking in the window, and my arms are flailing. I'm like, I can't get him on the phone line. Customer service, damn it. My, my arms are flailing. I'm just looking at you going, is Anthony getting crazy over Dell computer? <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you another thing, man. <laughs> India. Like, you call it laziness, but black people call it healthy paranoia. We do not believe in anything is going to be right. No. So it's like. So you just expect it. Oh, white entitlement is hilarious to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. check this out. <laughs> and the easy pass. You know what? <laughs> black people have been saying for years, easy pass is a guy. It's a government scam mm -hmm. because I don't. I don't quite. I I call, I was hearing it, but I couldn't hear it. I didn't have it loud out there. Yeah. But black people for years have been saying easy pass. You it tracks your movements. So yeah. You, so you go through the Holland, and then the next easy pass, if you get there quicker than the speed limit between right. each thing, you get a goddamn ticket in the mail. But they're not doing that. Well, I don't know. They right. can do it. I don't have Easy Pass. And the it's not the Easy Pass that's getting the black guys the tickets. It's those ankle bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> Good. See, I don't want to take that away from Norton. So I can look at an Arab funny every day. Right. I want right. Norton to be able to say ankle bracelet jokes so I can look at that. Because the racism's there, so you might as well be able to have a little fun with it, too. With the like uh, Arabs. And I want to see if a black girl's missing an Aruba, oh. what's going to happen? Oh, we, you know, we I admitted that. I pointed, we admitted that one. I don't know how many times I've pointed out the fact that when when a little white girl goes missing, oh. they put out the Amber, Alert, uh, Amber Alerts, and it's insane. People go crazy. The picture's all over the paper. And you barely ever hear a poor little black girl that's been kidnapped, eight years old or something like that. Oh, that little niglet runaway. <laughs> There that was, little nigga that ran away. God damn it. Get the, there was a great... You're right. No one really seems to care There was much. a great black-white story. Remember the grandma that was giving birth, the oldest woman to give birth? Yeah. She was 60-something. Mm -hmm. And then the following day, they found a black lady. Same fucking thing. She got yeah. maybe a mention. Oh, and the other lady, and yeah, the, yeah, whole slave ho, whole <laughs> slave ho, still popping out them babies. And the <laughs> and the white grandma, she was on every morning oh. news program. Oh my goodness, her white uterus is still working. It's beautiful. <laughs> and then there was a black grandma, yeah. and, and this is all you heard. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Black granny? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and I'm sure black people are getting bitten by the sharks, but we're not going to yeah. hear about no, it. No one cares. No one cares. Not, and it's no big deal. That's the thing. That's, I don't even get into this whole thing. It's, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Like, where, look, you just, like, the, the world is so effed up right now where you go, eh, you just, it just Who cares? It. Just like, F1 fighters finding this little white girl. You know she's not dead. She's somewhere else. She, who, how did those, those three idiots do what they did and then hide her in, like, secret caves, places that the Aruban people don't even know Don't know exist. about. It's a pretty small stop, island. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop. You know what I mean? Give me a, just give me a break with that. You I'm think not, she's alive somewhere? Ah, she's somewhere, but she's fucking, um, you she's think a she's now. Do, she, just, she got a taste of some dreadlock balls and she can't <laughs> stop. <laughs>
<laughs> she can't stop herself. There are actually two black guys that went down to uh, one of the islands and got murdered down there. And you barely heard anything about it. Barely. And it wasn't, uh, it was yeah. barely nothing? Yeah. You didn't hear anything? I didn't nothing about yeah. it. Yeah. News to me. Two guys, <laughs> yeah, went down there. And uh, you got murdered, and you just you really didn't hear yeah. anything about what's, it. What's your take on the Howard Beach thing? Look, man. We've been it, talking about that story for a, a little over a week now. I mean, yeah. for the rest of the country, basically, a few brothers were in a... Three black guys w wandered into Howard Beach Which looking to steal a car. And uh, a white guy driving around in his Escalade kind of got in some kind of a Fat eyeball Nick. altercation. This guy, Fat Nick, uh, got a couple of his buddies in a baseball bat, went after him, got one of the guys, beat him over the head, put him in the hospital with a fractured skull. And uh, now he's up on hate crime charges. Let me, did, let me ask. Uh, let me ask white people this. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. I think you, by the way, gonna be surprised the angle we took on the Howard Beach thing. I, do you get embarrassed when you think it's getting better? Do white people go? I think it's in your white world. Do you go? Things are getting so much better. Yeah. And yeah. then you hear this, and you go, oh, my God, I thought everything was... But everything oh, was good. I thought it... I didn't think niggas were kidding me with pets anymore. <laughs> uh, it's just is not... No. It's like not I, a surprise. I'm not, delu I'm not delusional. I know shit ain't getting any better than it was. People's feelings haven't changed. Laws have been put in place that make it harder to be racist. That's, that's all. That's what it is. It's, it's legislated. It's not... Yeah, it's legislated. Like, that's making racism go away. No, there's still f black guys that hate white guys. There's still white guys that hate black guys. But I think it's Sweater. something we do. I think it's something we like to do. You know what I'm saying? I it's just think basic it's enjoyment. animal nature. People I enjoy, like animals, people enjoy hanging out with their own people more than they do other people's people. That's why you'll have you'll have white guys with black friends, black friends, uh, black guys, with white friends, like that. But for the most part, when you're going out, it's like usually with your own people. You don't want some conglomerated, mulatto, <laughs> mongrel group of friends. <laughs> Both races will be destroyed in such a movement. I guess that's true, because I, I consider myself a friend with Opie, and any time mm -hmm. I try to hug him, you should just look at the face. The fear, I don't right? like hugging. Why not? Fear. First of all, you could squash me. I'm gentle when I come He's up. He's a on big, you. gentle bear of a hug. You know what? And Obi, you know how Obi's great. He doesn't even hide like how uncomfortable he is. His whole face mushes in like. <laughs> uh, are you it? ready to goddamn hug me, motherfucker? <laughs> I hate hugging big guys just because, and I don't care what friggin' color you are. Just for the fact that I, I come out as the bitch in the relationship, and I actually there are times I put my foot up, <laughs> like I'm hugging, and my foot goes up, and I'm like, I am a little bitch in this relationship. It's, it's, I make friends with the fake black people. Why? It's fake black people. They're fake black people. There was like this, Earl. Earl's a, a totally a fake yeah. black. You, you think you're hanging with one of these ghetto brothers, and you realize he's just as white as us. He's just yeah. safe. He's you just know, you want to feel like, hey, look at me, hanging with the ghetto bro. You and want then, Sinbad, not Fitty. And then as soon as you know, uh, Earl and I are walking down the street, and a real brother is coming the other way, he's just as scared. <laughs> he's, he's just... I remember this kid in, in high school. In other words, Drew Boogie. I remember this kid in high school. He was the black kid. I played basketball, so... Uh, and this one black kid on our team was, he acted like he was... One black kid on your basketball team? No, we had, I mean... Oh, one, okay, one, this uh, one, this particular... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little town called Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it was, it was Green Lawn. It must have been at least two. This guy had everything going that the, the, the ghetto had going. He had the styles, the movement, the talk. He would walk those halls and... and Quite frankly, most of us were like, oh, a little intimidated by the guy. He had it. It looked like he had it, right? So we uh, go and play, I think it was Amityville, which is, uh, you want to talk about uh, Oh yeah, a, a black neighborhood. It's, it's the real deal. Amityville, okay? where, the, where the house is. Amityville, yeah, New York, yeah. is seriously, is a black That's South Amityville, though. That's kind of nice area. Beach houses. We're yeah, talking yeah. North Amityville. Like, North, talking Disney. Yeah, in yeah, order right. to get no, through, in it. order to get through the Amityville horror, you have to go through... Uh, North Amityville, oh, okay. which is uh, much more of a horror oh, show. My goodness. <laughs> Whoa! But uh, so this kid, lock your lock your doors. So you get the idea. <laughs> this guy, you know, had this image like he was a badass motherfucker from right. the from the ghetto, right? Right. So we go to Amityville to play these guys, and then first of all, there's a curfew in the town back in the day, right? And we had armed guards that that got us armed. Off. I swear to God, really. 
Of a poli- whatever, wow. a police officer, whatever. Okay, that's not. This is all not surprise. You know, no, yeah. not a, a, a because a, a, a surprise. Because story our our like, uh, you know. our basketball team was you know mostly white. Yes, right. there was maybe two or three brothers on the team. So, so we had guys that escorted us from the bus to the locker room to the bench where we played, and they were behind us. And it was it was I'm not lying. It was a scary, scary scene when you're not used to this type of thing. And this guy that was supposed to be the badass guy from the ghetto was just as scared as us. And that's when I realized there's black guys and there's fake black guys. Amityville High School guys the, were in their thirties. The oh yeah, they all had full beards and <laughs> full beard. dunking over us. The game was over after the first quarter, but we still had to play three more quarters. It was just, what a nightmare. I didn't become. And that friends. kid was on the bench, just as scared, getting a little closer to us. I'm like. Man, you've been a phony all these years. Well, he's not a phony. It's just he there's there's levels to it, man. It's like yeah. I grew up in one of the toughest parts of that, but I was always a, a I was a clown, man. I was a yeah. ch- chubby clown, but I knew how to play basketball and I was funny. So the dudes that were gangsters didn't mess with me, you know what I mean? But I if you I know I'm comfortable around that because I know how to get around, but I'm mm-hmm. not that. I'm not, you know. But I didn't have white friends until I started doing comedy. Like Being funny keeps you out of a lot of <clears> shit. It does, man. really does uh, help out in school. You don't get beat. You know, there's those little cliques that go around, you know, the, the jocks and all that bullshit in high school and stuff. And I was pretty much on good terms with all of them, because you know. You, you was funny. And yeah. And you picked on... The right, like if you if you wasn't a bully with your funniness, mm-hmm. like I went after everybody, you know what I mean? Like Norton, Norton goes after everybody. Yeah. You know, and I know Norton probably took a slap back in the day. No, I didn't get beat up much because shut up. I didn't leave him alone. All right, I would run. <laughs> <laughs> Other, but just interrupt me for one second. I, I was going for I used to wear tangos, you know, because I was like I was in that awful phase. And I was going to get a drink of water, and this black kid, this tough black kid from like the, uh, like a real awful neighborhood, who had moved in, cut in front of me, and just kind of moved me. Oh. And I was like, all right, go ahead. Like I was All right, letting, go like, ahead. Like, yeah, you're giving him permission. The, like, <laughs> Two gangsters give a little water. <laughs> go ahead, homeboy. I know you. I know you thirsty. <laughs> thirsty. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. face is getting hot just thinking about that. Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. When Orlando I'll took wait. my Kango off, and I turn around and snap, he goes, "You want to fight me?" And I'm like, "If you want to look at my hat, just ask. Just ask." Girl. Can't you see Norton in high school with his golf gloves? His, <laughs> up to the. <laughs> Up to the farm, gothic gloves and his dumb black T-shirts. Uh, you bring, you. Uh, I just saw a video last night that I, you wow. just remind me of. I want to bring up on the show today. Okay, uh, there was a, a black guy harassing this white guy and his chick. Classic scene. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? Mo-? You know the whole black oh, thing yeah. going down, right? Intimidating. And and you're feeling. You're watching this video. Maybe Steve has it on FoundryMusic.com, or we can get it up there immediately. Someone sent it to me. And the guy looks like he's going to get the shit kicked out. And then there's other homies around like, yeah, man, you know, just <laughs> just losing it. Sorry, but <laughs> sorry, <laughs> whatever. Look at, you see how he stood up? Oh, something uh, happened to Opie. I'm going to find uh, out what it yeah. was. I'm dedicated to my art. So, <laughs> so, but you know the whole scene. You know, it's just the guy with his chick, and, and now he's being harassed. I don't know what he did. Maybe he deserves it, whatever. Uh-huh. And this black guy squares up like, come on, we're going, right? And I, and you're feeling bad for the guy in the video. All of a sudden, the guy goes into one of these deep master po karate stances. All oh, saw it. Oh, you the motherfucker see? right out. Holy shit! Yeah, the guy obviously was a uh, a third degree black something. Yep. Heavy duty, right? And now he's just doing the moves, and the black guy slowly but surely is getting went from like not scared of anything to like very uh, you know intimidated but now he can't be showed up right so now he's going to fight anyway and you saw the result knock the this fuck guy out. took pretty much one punch and just just slaughtered oh, his friend had to drag him his friend had to like drag him across the street wait is this the pimp the pimp guy who got knocked out in the street yeah. oh yeah. wait that's a you pimp seen that? yeah he was a pimp yes he was a pimp but the best part of that is how the black guy was so intimidating, and you felt so bad for the white guy, and all of a sudden, he can, he goes into oh, this yeah. stance, and like, oh, my God, can you <laughs> imagine? Good. Chalk you know? up one. You know? I, I can't oh, you wait to all the... You got the video? <laughs> I can't wait to all the white guys get confidence from the story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. I no, hope he's giving white ass. people hope. No, hey, no. let me tell you something. All black guys are woofing. You <laughs> can do it. It's not even a black-white thing. The, the point I'm going to make is you never know who you're going to fuck with, because this guy looked like he was obviously a very easy target, but then he's like, "All right, I guess I got to go." He gets way down low and yeah. gets ready for the fight. You I'm know, like, Master "Oh Poe my got god!" 
Yeah. Master Paul got his freckles, you know what I mean? And you just don't know he could just break all your limbs, you know what I mean? Yeah, he'll kick your ass. He'll use like a broom handle. You and can just... see he's a kook, though. When you when you look at his eyes, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, kind of yeah, like looking honest. through you. You can yeah. kind of see he's a like a problem. <laughs> a he's problem. A, he's a fucking sociopath on some <laughs> level. <laughs> You know, he's the type of person that bites eight peoples in a Wendy's and just doesn't remember it. Maybe he can say people instead of peoples. Peoples. Steve, peoples. Uh, Steve's getting the video and he'll 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 put it up on uh, openanthony.com well, for the Steve, weekend. Can we see Where is you it? Pot it up. I will. Mm -hmm. You just need to see the first part where the the chick and the guy, and you you just feel bad for the guy, like oh god, he's like got to defend. Here comes another beaten, like the guy in the pizza place. Oh, that was awful. He's got to def he's got to defend his girlfriend, and it's it's going to be ugly, but he's got to do it, you yeah. know. And then when he goes into the karate stance, you're like, oh my god. He was like debating, do I really want to knock this guy? Yeah, look, out or not? yeah. Oh, that's not the one. That's not the one. No, man. wow, are you kidding? Well, oh, then look the at this one. No. You'll enjoy this one then. See, there's a. Uh, a hoe is trying to hold her pimp back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the guy now wants to go across the street and beat the crap out of this white guy. Right. So the hoe is trying to hold him back. Yeah, do the play-by-play. -play. He rips his shirt off. Right. Now he's a shirtless pimp. He walks up to the white guy. White guy is eyeing him up. And bam! Boom, oh, boy! Oh, wow. And he is down. He gave him one, like, back what? fist. Yeah. Yeah. Now the the one I'm talking about it's a it's a young white uh, kid with his uh with his you know with his just girlfriend not a not a not a hooker or anything. He gave him like a back fist or oh, something. No, you got to see the other one because the what's Later great night. about the other one is the guy actually goes into the karate you know stance like all right does. and and you just huh. as you're watching this video you're like oh man <laughs> that one wasn't a you don't have that hit. one yet <clears throat> no. Damn it! I, I didn't save it. I just assumed oh, it had that it. That one, was a ba he, he like he squared off like he was gonna punch him with his right. He just swung his lefty yeah, backhand with his left. That was a strong get away from me. Yeah, it but just, knocked his ass. Wait, out. Someone, body move. Yeah. Wait, uh, let's go to Sean in New York. Sean. Hey boys, how you doing? Hey. Hi. Hi, Pookie. Oh my God, Sean, come on. Wait. Sometimes you gotta just go with the flow. Let's go. Go. <laughs> hey, that video you're looking for up is on uh, big-boys.com. Oh, big boys, yeah. What is, what's that website about? Yeah, a lot of cool movies. You just go oh, there and download stuff. videos of horrors and atrocities and beatings and oh, cool. uh, car wrecks. I mean, it's like a fart.com for uh, video clips. It's just fucking incredible. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. All right, later, boys. All right. Well, that sounds like a good website to check out, and we'll find the video on there, and we'll we'll link it. or What's we'll it from? Where, where, where did it take place? I don't know. I don't know. What is it like? I don't know the history of it. it looked, the guy was just kind of walking with his girlfriend, and all of a sudden the black <coughs> guy, for whatever reason, you know, is harassing him, and then uh, they square off. That's where I get all my fun videos, like the uh, the black guy in the pizza parlor that beat up the uh, white guy, right. and the um, the kid uh, riding in the back of the riding his. He, what was he doing? He was he was opening the back he car door. Car door. He was in the car. He's opening the back door and hitting people on their bicycles with it so he goes to do it one time and the driver kind of swerves he hangs out the door he falls out he's trying to hold on to the door and hits his head on a parked car bumper it's a phenomenal oh, footage fantastic it's better than the Zapruder film oh, fantastic Jeez. that's not Ogres you can go to Ogres and get that and it's yeah like on I don't want to go to Ogres nah. do you, that's do a little you find too much. that you that you when you, you get an older man that you can't watch I can't oh, yeah. I used to be able to watch a beheading no nah, I can't watch that like, shit anymore crossing my legs eating eating you nope. know, no, nope. can't watch meat. the beheadings. No, nope. can't watch them. It's just it. Bah, I think you get closer to God when you just get older for it's some reason. It's too much to watch. Is. I can't watch somebody <clears throat> in that much agony. I just can't do it. Can't do did it. Did you see the WWF last night or WWE? What no. last night? Oh, the dude in the beginning because of the the London the London thing. Uh huh. They go uh, due to tonight's. Uh, uh, there's, there's, due to the London, you know, tragedy in London, tonight's episode of Raw is going to be, or tonight's episode of SmackDown is going to be uh, parental league, you know, parental guys, right? So <clears throat> they have a character, like a a, a terrorist character. Oh, jeez. Muhammad, whatever. Uh, of course. So he's fighting the Undertaker. So he has this lackey guy who always kind of talks for him. He's going, la, 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 la. <laughs> so they made him fight the Undertaker. So the Undertaker beats him up in seven seconds. So the guy says to his friend before he goes out, he goes, look, if you do this, you will be rewarded by Allah, right? So after the Undertaker beat him up, the dude gets on his knees and starts praying, right? Allah, <laughs> you know, and about six mass, like, terrorist dudes come out and beat the shit. <laughs> they beat up the Undertaker, right? It, it, you know, terrorize him. 
and then the the beat up guy in the ring that the Undertaker beat up, they they carry him out as if he's a martyr uh in in Afghanistan or whatever the case may be. I'm like it, they went through an entire like it was a what whole are they skit. insane. It, that's what it was. I, I'm watching it and I think stuff like that's hilarious. But yeah. I'm going, oh my <laughs> that's god, a little tasteless. I'm like, are they, are they, it was like the terrorists do. And if you watch any of them dudes the beheading, the, those dudes they came dressed just like those. Really. Dudes. And, and beat up the Undertaker, you know, did his, you know, every time they hit him, they would pray. And I, I, I think, oh, my I think God. Vince is getting desperate at this that's, point. That's not, uh, oh. Whoa, oh. And, and you know I love stuff. <laughs> I just was like, oh. Yeah, you're going to like, ugh. But, you know, when I wrote for them, I they, they used to have a character, this Indian dude. And Vince is, is a cold dude, man. And he, he had this Indian dude. Yeah, we never talked to you about that. I think mm. Jimmy brought it up or something. You used to fly around with Vince McMahon in a, or something? In a Learjet. In yeah. a Learjet and write for WWF? <laughs> write, for, write for WWF. And Vince McMahon, it, I, there's three people I've met in my life. You know, you probably can name them you, people in your life where you met and you, you lost your madness. Like, you, you try to go, hey, what's happening? Hey, good to see you, Michael Jackson. Nice talking to you. But there's some people you meet, and you're just incomplete. Yeah, because we're all meeting Michael Jackson. Jesus. But, but you, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? that's a great example, though. But, but you, there's people, like, if you met Michael Jackson, would you be... You you've been in the business long enough where you go, yeah. yeah I, you, I don't know. Be. Someone like Michael Jackson, <laughs> he, he's like uber famous. I think I would I would be starstruck. A little bit. Yeah, okay, without that's a doubt. Fair enough. That's I don't fair. typically get starstruck, but I mean I probably would. With Shut him. up, Mister mm. Pictures with everybody. You're starstruck. <laughs> I was starstruck when you walked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a little of that actually. Little, yeah. Little, thank you, just, just a little bit. A little I was like, in your stomach. <laughs> yeah. I saw him on Tough Crowd. But it's like I met a few people, like maybe four, three or four, mm-hmm. where I go, oh, boy. And I was at his house in Stanford, right? Wow. They were rewriting. Nice and he just comes too. out, hello, Patrice, and, and, his, and his jumpsuit and his everything. And I just was like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, like a little girl, like, hey, you know, hi, Mr. <laughs> 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 yeah, we've had him on a few times. And uh, he's just he's, he's a powerful dude, man, but he's a co- he's the uh, he's yeah. a cold dude. Now, this one guy, he used to have a turban. He goes in and. No one, none of the wrestlers talk to him personally, you know, except for the big guys. Like, I'm on a plane with, like, Triple H. Everybody else got to drive there, like, Hyundai Sonatas from <laughs> town to town. But, like, Triple H, Undertaker, those guys, they get on his plane. So I'm in the back and, um, you know, watching this whole thing go down. And he, this guy with the turban, he, sends it, he goes, listen, my family says, please, can you stop oh, making no. fun oh, my God. of my turban? Oh, you no. Because my people... Bleh, 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 bleh. Tiger... Tiger... Tiger Ali what? Singh. Oh. Tiger Ali Singh. He's right. like, please, don't make fun of the... He goes... <laughs> He goes, shut up and put on a turban. <laughs> Please, my people. I beg you. <laughs> put on the turban. <laughs> like the jerky boys do. He's just like, my people. He's like, I don't want to hear that nonsense. Get out there and put on that stupid turban, you jackass. It was like, oh, my That's God. That's great. Oh, there's the clip. From uh, WWE last night. By the way, someone's yeah, they're pointing choking out, the shit out of. Uh, someone's pointing the out that they taped this on Tuesday, so it's a it's a huge coincidence that. Uh, really? Know, yeah, that the bombings were what yesterday. Yeah, they're choking. I'm dressed in there. We're cutting a, a Christian man's head off. Yeah, where? Yeah, but watch how they take the other dude away. Yeah. Like he's the martyr. Yeah. It was brutal, and you know, I think I think anything is funny, man. But I was like, this is not good. Yeesh. They even lifted his hair, like his head, like the way. <laughs> oh, I yeah, saw yeah. That, and that they lifted uh, the Undertaker's I, head. They, I'm telling you, it was brutal. <sighs> They're thinking, man. That's a touchy subject. That is a touchy subject. Hey, to reenact a, be- a beheading in a wrestling ring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, are you? Mm. <laughs> Were you responsible for some of the legendary storylines on WWF uh, in recent years? One le- that comes to mind? No, Any? I was I was the fourth man on the totem pole. They have a kid there, this young white kid who's the boss. But I would, if I'd have stayed, I just couldn't deal with what they what were they asking. I couldn't yeah. do that little Learjet with them, and um, you know, uh, just I just couldn't do it because they're very corporate. You have to be mm-hmm. committed to their cause. And I just wasn't committed, you know what I'm saying? And and I got fired. What's her name? Uh, Stephanie fired me like six times. Really? She kept calling me back and firing me, but she doesn't realize comics, 
just get fired. We just so she goes, you know, you're fired, right? I go, ah, yeah, yeah huh, I understand. Well. I do understand. You know what I mean? I, I'm not gonna. What would you get fired for? Um, I because I had a show. Yeah. And I said I can't make it. And she's like, what? <laughs> you're gonna, you're committed. Yeah. <laughs> they want 100 percent like, loyalty. I was like, over I there. met Steve Austin. It was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> like the oh, thing, what I took from it is like how how powerful Vincent Man was, and like how too the Rock was cooler than he should have been. Yeah. Like he was just too accessible. I I I didn't want him to be that accessible. Just like like a regular guy. Hey man, hey how you doing? They were real regular guys, and they kissed the writers' asses because the writers. Make up scenarios. They make them, yeah. For them to become whatever. So they, they, this little white kid, he has these giant roided up dudes like, <laughs> kissing, yeah. kissing ass. And he's like, was he ah. good? What he did? The kid? Yeah. He must have been because he was Vince's right hand dude. Man. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Do they write scripts <sighs> or just storylines? They write do everything this? done. Really? There's, n there's some who get leeway like. Kurt Angle, the biggies, they they can they can talk, yeah. They can say words that aren't uh, there sometimes. But the other guys, but you they stick do to the not script. do not play around with that man. Wow. He runs that with an iron fist. He's behind every. He's behind the scenes, sitting there at the when they come out with the explosions. Uh huh. He's there, like all right, blah 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 blah. Bap, you know, doing running it. The director. Uh -huh. All right, here it is. Oh, Not you got that one. Finally. All right. I, I don't mean Make to Make sure finally. this one ends up uh, Eric, on yeah, Opie and Anthony. Get it up on OpieandAnthony.com. So you got the... Yeah, check this out. So this is the uh, video I was talking about. A, a white guy with his uh, blonde, good-looking girlfriend. Yeah, look at that. There's a bunch of guys, like, harassing him. It's not fair. Yeah. It's only one black guy. There's, yeah, they look like white guys. Yeah, right? a yeah, what's going on? Well, it turns out to be... Oh no! Oh shit! You are in trouble when he when that guy pulls that karate shit out of his hat. You are in trouble. Look at this black guy. Now, now he's scared. He doesn't know what to do. Look at him. Oh, oh no. no! Look at him. He's oh like, boy! But, but he knows the black guy now knows he can't back down. Right? Oh no! So, so he's looking around like, how do I? F what the? How do I? How do you get out of and this? And he's with one? his he's with his boys. That uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. It looks like it's. He, well, maybe there's another black. Is he black? Is he black, Opie? He's not even black, Opie, you. Come on. Uh, are you insane? This guy's black. This is, uh, he looks like a skinhead. He's he's light skin black. This is, uh, Look at this are you guy. Sure about that? Look at this guy. This he's he's black. in major karate mode now. This guy's though. not black. Now watch, watch, watch. He's like, all right, well, I gotta I gotta do something. Black guy attempts to throw. A is punch. he gonna try? He's trying to get in there and watch. Watch this, Ant. Oh no. Watch this. He took a little jab at him. Yeah, that's it. Look at this guy knows how to fight. Oh Look at his oh! arm go. Oh, my God. That guy knows how to fight. Wow. His arms were flailing Get like that. like he didn't know what he was doing, but everything was very calculated. Get that up on OpenAnthony.com. Yeah. See how much this guy, how good this guy really is if he's above. That guy was deflecting everything and then just saw an opening and punched that guy right in the head. Was Get he that black, up. that guy? That guy no, was white. Was that Shut guy was up. white as as snow, Opie. Jesus, Opie. I was Opie. expecting the rifts to be surrounded. They don't, know. They don't have to be as dark as Patrice to be considered black. <laughs> We're not, he was like Eric black. Church. He was fucking... He was there Asian wasn't even Sicilian. another black guy in the crowd. There was no black people there. <laughs> there was like suburban houses that in the background. Nothing. He was doing black stuff. Oh, That's what right. he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's black. He was like, I'll knock you out, sucker. Thank you. Uh, yeah. That guy is not black. He's oh, not wait. Black. It's South Beach. He just has a good tan. I'm Where sorry. Where did you get that he was black? That guy's oh, black. God. I don't know Damn. about that. He's a skinhead. I'm going to sue on behalf of all black people. He, everything is black. black. Uh, but the point I'm making. racist. The point yeah, I'm making. It looks, exactly. like, looks like the other, the, the karate dude is in deep shit. Yeah. And all of a sudden he goes into karate When he mode. goes into that and stance, you, guys, you, just get just, that, you know oh, the guy no. is just looking up. Oh, damn it. Why did but I pick you, this you, guy? Why did I pick on this guy? But no one goes into a karate stand, so you're going, ah, this guy doesn't know karate. You think? Who does a karate stand? Well, that's what the guy was thinking. That Maybe was, that's what he was thinking. That was what the guy was thinking at Look first. Look at him. He's blocking everything and comes around with that right and lays him out. And lays out that alleged black guy. <laughs> that white black guy. <laughs> I understand Opie's angry at the Jews that beat up Reginald and Bennett. Then, and then Opie, Opie <laughs> who emphasizes the black guy, then he, goes, he did a perfect white get out of it. Anyway, my point is. My <laughs> All right. My point is that he got knocked out like a nigga. <laughs>
That was, that was a white guy. A white guy, get out of it. <laughs> All right, it's look. a nice, bright, sunny, suburban day. <laughs> look, you know what? I'm not going to take this abuse. <laughs> get a poll up on opianandanthony.com <laughs> with the video, and we'll have the results on Monday. Of who, if he's black man. or not. Oh, yeah. I want to know what style that was. That, that would have been interesting. That was, uh, that was, uh, that was. Oh, that was great. We should ask Master Paul. That was but it was just very interesting. Showboating. It really, I, I know, it was very interesting to see the guy going from, oh, my God, this poor guy. Guy to oh, holy shit, this that. guy's got what it How takes. How great to know that type of shit where you can get into that stance and just go, all right, come on, motherfucker. Another come on. another reason he wasn't black. Yeah, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. That n no guns. Right. See, black you, black people you do get not the karate do stance? that anymore. And his boys would have not stood. His boys would have shot him right in his back. Yeah. Uh, well, Rick's on the line. Rick. Yeah. What's hey. going on, guys? Hey, Rick. How's my favorite little Jimmy Norton doing? Okay. <laughs> get to the point, you fucking asshole. Please, Rick, you guys, right sometimes you guys got to understand you have to get right to the point. Other times we could fuck around a little bit. Right. The guy he's fighting is not black. He's a fucking beaner. If you look at Mexican. him, he's got skinny little shorts with a sock pulled up. He's not black. A guy in a red shirt Mexican? A big, wide foot I don't think he was, I don't think he was Mexican either. I think he was a white boy. Because white guys, that happens with white guys. That guy would never feel comfortable enough getting in karate stance when there's that many black dudes around that's harassing. Yeah. Because, well, you know, I don't guy, care how good you are at karate, friends, right? that gun comes Somebody's out. Somebody's going to get stabbed it's over shot, Johnny. period. Right. Well, not that it's a suburban, like, they would just tie guys that would go to, like, a suburban. Now, you can look at the house in the background. That wasn't, like, a bad neighborhood. That Nobody would feel that comfortable in Harlem getting in the karate stance like that. Right. No white guy on planet. He would He would have mm -hmm. said, look, I, I know karate, please. <laughs> or I know, the, I have a cell phone and I know numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Brian in Philly. Brian? Hey, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, that white guy went into pat battle mode. Punch out. Damn it. Uh -huh. Nice. I mean, it's fine and dandy to call the show and go, hey, oh, hey, Anth, hi, Jimmy, something like that. Fine. But uh, it's the guys that call up and go, hi, Buttercup, and then wait. They wait for a response and they go, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, what I wanted to say, get to the point. Just say hi to the show and get to your point. But the point I'm going to make this times where that makes sense. You of gotta course. Know the rhythm of the show. Sometimes right. we're lazy, slow, suck. Yeah, that, have fun. But then there's times where we're we're rocking. Let's go. You got to help us and uh, oh. keep us going here. Our hi, awful. honey puss. Hi. Hi, Op. Hi, Aunt. Hi. How you doing? Hi, Jimmy. Little sugar tits. That's like. <laughs> That's like yeah. that's like being on a highway, 70, 75 miles an hour, and for no reason whatsoever, you just decide to go down to 40. Yeah, right, for nothing. And then you go back up to 70, If we're all driving at 40, join us at 40. Right, if we're going 75, <laughs> 80, let's go. You know, to let's be move. honest with you, with traffic. Yes. I'm pretty savvy in the business, but I don't know if I would know how to come in and stick with the rhythm. I might call in and not even know what the rhythm is. I well, mean, then we only want professional calls. <laughs> we only want pro calls. These <laughs> dope set. <laughs> That's a lot of me. Y'all dig it. Can't keep up. There. Keep up with the rhythm, stupid. I'm pulling up on this guy's bumper at 40 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm speeding along. <laughs> All right, Patrice O'Neill in studio today doing a great we job. We want to find out what happened to Keith. Yeah, we will. Well, let's there take a go. quick break. We all have to take leaks. When he's stuff, supposed man. to be here too? Yeah, yeah. Keith is. Uh, see, I talked to him this morning. He wasn't, you know, he's handling business. B business. He handles it's his family's business. Keith is the is the uh, matri the patriarch. The right? patriarch. The patriarch of the of Robinson clan. Of the clan, man. He has to run business. Yeah. Does he have something going on, or is he just being Keith? Nah, I think I believe him, man. I know when Keith is lying, yeah. you know, nah. when he's just like ah, I can't robble robble when he's not robble robble. Ah, robble robble. But he wasn't. He was. He was uh, you know, you can hear he has something on his mind or whatever. But no hey. one cares. He's still stupid. He's just living in New York. So when he has things on his mind, he can come into the radio station. He's in Philly. He's an ass. All right, here we go. Here hey, Poe, what do what do you think? Yeah, Master yeah, Poe is studying Paul? the uh, the video. Poe, uh, you you have you seen the whole thing? Is he black or white? <laughs> well, <laughs> he's Master Poe. Poe, <laughs> <laughs> po, did you see the guy go into stance? Uh, yeah, and, and you wouldn't do that in a, as as he was saying in a bad neighborhood because they'll just break your leg. Someone yeah. that knows how to fight, they'll just crack your leg right in half. Really? Yeah, yeah. Nobody does I don't know. That. that seems like his leg is outstretched pretty far. Do you watch yeah. the UFC? No yeah. one does that. No, they get together and just tie people in they a just, knot. But just, the guy got the job done in the end. Cause they can all fight, though. He knew he was fighting some street fighting guy who just was going to box him a little bit. Those guys in the UFC can all do that. But he did, like, a whole thing with his arms, and it was like, uh-oh, now you're in trouble. What was his style, Paul? Um, I believe it was either wushu or, well, kung fu. 
Wushu. Yeah, Wushu. I like the Wushu Kenpo, pork. Right? No, 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 Wushu. It was Wushu. Yeah, it looked like it because he had a long stance. Yeah. And and when he was chewing the blacks. And if, if you notice, <laughs> anything, yeah, no? <laughs> if you notice, so fucking awful was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's my job. Uh, come up with the bad ones. Thanks, Patrice. He was woo shooing. Now the strike at the very end, <laughs> yeah, was not calculated. No, no, it wasn't. He he. He, what was he doing? I saw his arms like flailing, but, but, but blocking, in a defensive though. mode. Well, he, he was, was blocking, blocking yeah. a lot. Yeah, he was. And then it looked like that right came out. It looked a little that calculated. That looked on purpose to me. Yeah. I don't know fighting like Pono's fighting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are now seeing the video because it's up on OpianAnthony.com, and they're starting to say that looks more like a lucky shot. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I a don't lucky, know. A lucky white guy shot. Let's just say he's at least he's mixed. Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> not a black guy. No, that is absolutely not a black guy. No, and no it's that. not a black area because no one feels no. that comfortable getting in the stance like that. Nope. I, I mean, don't know. You I'm might sure. in an area, if you're no. scared, you might do that just to try to, like, intimidate people. You Why do that stance when you can spend that time running as quickly as you well, can you away your from it? Because you got your chick. Which, you know, finally. Hey, the, sorry. The dude was a sitting duck because, yeah, his, he yeah, was he there with his chick. He could have got killed, man. He, he, he and it's probably the chick that got him in the in the situation. Yeah. You know, she was probably... Nah, 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 she said, look at that black guy. Yeah. And the guy wasn't black, and it pissed him off. That's right. why pimping has to come into focus here. <laughs> Baby, keep your effing mouth shut. It's easier walking. to smack your bitch than it is getting in a exactly. fight. Exactly. Keep her in Just alive. go shut up and keep smack your, her. Keep your bitch in line. <laughs> oh, it's shut up. Oh, yeah, lady, ladies, we spent a lot of time with you acting like we're the toughest thing going, but the reality is we're the biggest wimps going, Jesus. and please don't get us in trouble out there. Especially with people that are supposed to be black. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Might be Mexican. <laughs> How many times have you had, you know, your girlfriend or something, so there's some kind of traffic problem, and she's beeping your horn obnoxiously, oh. and then they turn around, and there's little old you behind the wheel, like, thanks. Well, they blurt out stuff like, you know, go fuck yourself. And you're like, oh, now I'm the guy. No, now now girl, I might as well have said it. You, your girl's not. Your girl's nah, not she doesn't say right? that. No. No. Yeah. no. no confrontations like My that. Brain in the movie theater, she, she said something in the movie theater once. Yeah. So why don't you shut the fuck up to some uh, oh. uh, Hispanic uh, woman? Damn it, Sean from Jersey. And she was with a whole family, and and the, her boyfriend, the Spanish woman's boyfriend, right, my my girlfriend said, "Why don't you shut the fuck up?" Because it escalated to that point, and she went, "You so you what'd you say?" And the boyfriend went, "Uh oh, you put her in battle mode." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh. and I did what any self-respecting guy would do. Got up and left the theater. Oh. Got the manager. No one. I want the manager. <laughs> Co customer service. Customer service. <laughs> customer <laughs> service. <laughs> I, my movie-going experience has been ruined by this Hispanic woman. If one moment, please, sir. If your teeth are under the seat in front of you, press one. <laughs> <laughs> your girlfriend is being raped. <laughs> press three. <laughs> oh. If you know the rape you like to see. <laughs> The, the movie theater owner, the manager, uh, put me in another theater. That, the movie that I was watching, I was about half an hour into, a, I think it was Mission Impossible 2. Uh, and another Mission Impossible 2 was starting at a theater next to this one. Uh, so he moved me into that theater. And that theater was just full of scared white people that would chase <laughs> out of the other theater. We're all just looking at each other with no self-respect. Is that yeah. Tom Cruise? Mm. Tom Cruise! <laughs> That's what was happening. Oh, he looked fine. Uh -oh. That's all I was hearing. That happened in War of the Worlds. I just saw War of the Worlds. Oh, oh like, really? Uh oh, watch out! Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it comes! Uh oh, uh oh, oh, you better watch! Oh, he gone now. <laughs> Where they come from? Right out the ground? <laughs> oh, <boy>. Flat <laughs> out the ground. <laughs> Please don't be a stereotype, little girl. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Getting some of the ringtones going on the phones. Oh God! Don't, oh. don't fuck it. Cause black guys don't even talk in the theater no more. We just we nah. handle it quick. It's a quick. Yo, uh, 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 I uh, watch the movie. But bl girls, uh, yeah. Uh, black and parrots. Don't. Uh, <laughs> girl, uh, and don't say a fucking word it's about you it. You for a white boy. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna rewind back to that video. We got Sean in Jersey. Uh, Sean, go ahead.
Hey, guys, I just saw the video. Actually, his technique is called coon shoe. <laughs> oh, you... Oh. <laughs> That's the whole... <laughs> That was the obvious line, though. That's why I want to... I want white people to be able to do that for the rest of their life so I can be racist. Thank you, yeah. sir. Coon shoe. <laughs> Coon foo. <laughs> Coon foo. <laughs> you know, the talking in the theaters has to stop, because when I... A few years ago, when I, when I saw Stardust Memories at the Magic Johnson Theater, it was amazing how much talking was going on. <laughs> <laughs> the Magic Johnson Theater. <laughs> oh. God damn. God. Oh. The Magic Johnson It is just a chore, though, some What's of the things. <laughs> Music. What? <laughs> I, I I used to go I used to go in Brooklyn I used to go to the movie theater in Brooklyn it was just a nightmare for me and now I go to Great Neck and uh, it's just full of Jews and they don't talk during the, the movie they just sit there and watch the movie although I did see Downfall which was a little odd watching it with a bunch of Jews and uh, it's that, well, that Hitler, sucks too when there's the no Hitler bunker movie emotion at the theater either I mean more of the world is the people well, I went to see it it was like parrots in there but it was still you know, you you yeah. need that. You need that energy. You need that. Yeah. Was, it, was it a good movie? We're here. I'm gonna be, be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It was two movies. The greatest movie I ever saw on that in that particular alien thing, mm -hmm. better than anything. And the worst movie I ever saw because of that that Dakota fan. And I've never wished a child was killed in a movie before. <laughs> you don't like the little Dakota fan? She made me sick. <laughs> She's adorable. She is She's this. A... There's nothing childlike. She's like a, there was no child. Well, I like, know. Uh, she's she's a very year, like adult. She's a thirty-year-old like. woman. She's like, daddy, yeah. daddy. Yeah, yeah. Like if if if, if and Tom Cruise was so good in the movie because he was mm -hmm. so an, a non-hero. He was just trying to keep his kids alive. One is calling him by his first name, and he's trying to get him to call him dad. And the other one's like, Daddy, are we gonna live today, Dad? It was like you can see that when they said cut, she was going, Stephen. <laughs> um, did I give you what you needed on that particular? <laughs> <laughs> she's like that on every on the she award made, shows. You watch the award she shows. She gives speeches. She's like sick. a thirty-year-old woman yeah. trapped in a ten-year-old yeah. body. She ruined the movie for me. She anytime, really. She. I'm telling you how bad she was in that movie. You ever seen any other movies she's in? Uh, the, the De Niro one. Well, the, the, the horror movie there with De Niro. Didn't see that. Saw Man on Fire. And right. She wasn't bad in that because she was kidnapped <laughs> through the entire movie. <laughs> Yeah, and I've never wished a, a kid was like, oh, yeah. please, please, please. I'd like to see her in the Jean Benet Ramsey story. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Her with that little cowboy hat on and a oh. garret around her throat. Is that is that just wrong to say that about a kid? Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. yeah. Like, but not her dead as a person, but in the movie, just in the movie, just have her killed. Just get rid of her <laughs> right away, early Daddy, on. The aliens, Daddy. Right. <laughs> well, we're gonna continue with Patrice O'Neill. Are we uh, plugging anything? I'm doing Caroline's <clears throat> tonight with Voss, Ooh. Voss and Bonnie. Oh, what, ah, oh, what time? Like the dynamic duo. I don't know. Duo. Whenever Voss crawls out of Bonnie's asshole for five <laughs> seconds, yeah, good we're going to do a comedy show. So I want to go down there 12 tonight. Oh, oh, you're doing the late show? The or late show is me, okay. Greer, Voss, Bonnie, and uh, whoever so comes week. through. Oh, tonight's a Friday. I thought it was Thursday. I know. I'm thinking Friday. Friday. I thought it was Wednesday, actually. Oh, wow. Wednesday. Yeah, oh, because we, we had a couple of days, days off. Well, that was good. We'll go to break with the Stephen Lynch song that kind of makes sense now, I guess. It does? That's ah, a song about liking uh, a black chick's bass. song for every occasion. Eh. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm actually enjoying like Norton, Norton's uh, intro music to his shows, man. It's like not my new favorite. Oh, you, you, did you get it? Yeah. Oh, man. It used to be, um, you know, uh, Iron Man. But now it's like Norton's intro. I love that song. Man. It's a national act about well, Sabbath 20 Sabbath. Of course it's Sabbath. Yes. But it has a beat to it. That, even yeah. this song is, as soon as you pop that, yeah, Metallica. Booba. Metallica. You like that? Yeah. 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 White guys rule. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, we got lots going on here. Patrice O'Neill in studio. Yeah. What the uh, hell you were wanna, laughing about well, off that, the air? The water thing? You want to go down Oh, that my road? God, that yeah. That was pretty interesting, actually. You got it, because I, oh, yeah. yeah. I can't imagine that type of mindset where Absolutely. some guy is telling you this and he's serious. So I do a show. It's a private show. It's n Actually, it's not for Michael Dell. It's, it's for his money managers who are super rich, and they get 
I think, because I, you know. That's a corporate gig, basically. It, it was a corporate gig. Do. And they were learning about me. They were asking me black questions, you know. You know, what's it, yeah. what's it like to Like yeah. an exchange program. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know. They get p- uh, people like Patrice to entertain them in between their meetings and oh, stuff. Oh, no. They had, uh, and they had as the per- in, in a room entertaining 20 people, um, Blinded by the light. What's, what group is that? Steve Miller Band. But they had them like really? in a room playing their music for in front of twenty rich people. When you're when you're all multi gazillionaires and you have a little party for yourself, you don't just get some wedding band or how you get like Steve Miller. You you know you just pop them in a room. It's God. What the Christmas party? Well, the Christmas party was funny, but that was because you know. Oh, well, tell that really fast. And then Bradley I... Delp, the singer from um, Boston. Remember the band Boston? Oh, one of the biggest yeah. bands, uh, well, one of the, the biggest albums of all time, that yeah. first one. Boston. And uh, he was uh, playing <coughs> Beatles. He was playing Beatle covers in a Beatle cover band uh, for our radio station's Christmas party up in uh, Boston. So he's playing. Th- here, this guy was selling out arenas in the 70s, had one yeah. of the biggest albums ever. Fast forward a few years, and it's Aunt and I and the rest of the yeah. dopey DJs at the station with our dates watching him do Beatles songs. But should he in not front of hundred people? Now there's a difference between like you should be doing that and yeah. you you shouldn't. Like it's like okay, you see that that show on on uh, NBC with all the old bands. That I used would to love be. that show. Yeah. it's like hit me, baby, they one more time. Sh- they should be. So maybe the guy right. from Boston should be doing that because he can't help it. You have you don't have a career. You don't have a career. He said we talked to him. He said that's what he wants to do. If he's and still gotten that, if he's still got the royalty money rolling in from Boston, sure he's did. all set for life, and he likes Beatles tunes, wants to do and that. By the way, God all, bless him. In all fairness, he he does an unbelievable job too. Of course he did. And then he's got a great voice. End of the night, and you know, and can sing a tune or two. He's up there drunk, just hey, singing hey, help him out. <laughs> and I got to say, I sang with the singer from Boston. Yeah, How I about just, that. Because by the third set, no one's paying attention. This is a Christmas party. Everyone's hammered, and here's this guy that used to be a rock Built superstar. Built arenas in the 70s, yeah. I want to be detached enough to just go make money. That's why I'm just not, I don't have anything, because I can't get detached. I get depressed. You can't I get, get detached from what, though? You're... Meaning I can't, like, I could, I would, I should want to just go perform in front of a bunch of rich rich white people every five minutes. Right. Hey, Baba do ba bing ba bang you know, man. It was like a, a guy who did an, uh, what is it, Dr. Evil guy. He did that, and he gets paid, and he just, he just Walks around muscled like Dr. through Evil. it. Uh, uh, yeah. million dollars, and he got paid and left, and I'm trying to. It was to, really him? It was, no, it was. Uh, it was <laughs> impressive. You know, whatever. Hey, can, real fast, John in Astoria, let's get past this. Go ahead, John. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I just want to let you know, it's not Steve Miller Band. That's Manfred Mann's Earth Band that sang that song. Oh, is that it? Uh, yeah, he's right, just, too. Just felt like correcting you. All right, thanks, John. Yeah. What, Bruce right. redid it. I think Bruce did it originally, then Manfred. I don't, I don't know. And it was like, so I'm in front of these these rich, I mean, they're like Michael Dell was the richest of all. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's 20 billion. And it, everything 20 billion with 20 a B. 20 billion right. with a B. And it trickles down. Um, like, I was asking so many questions, like, how did you become this rich, you know? And his whole thing, you know how he became rich, because you're talking about him today. Yeah. He cut out stores. That's why. That's what he did. He just uh-huh. he built the computers for 600 and sells them to you for 700 Because he doesn't have stores. He doesn't have online. stores. doesn't yeah. have blah, blah, blah. That's doesn't why he's worth a billion service. dollars. That's it. So I'm in room, the, 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 like, if somebody in there was worth $3 million, and I was talking to him, he goes, yeah, I own a... Uh, this business that I'm worth four million. I'm like Jesus. You're like you know, like, hey nigga, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like you're a joke, you poor son of a bitch. So I'm talking to this guy. You know, everybody in there, Lear Jets and da da da. They at the table, and, they, and and it's fair enough. They're gonna ask me black questions. Some ask them white questions, which was much more important. You know what I mean? Like you know, saving money and things like that. And I'm like, look, I ain't. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I just bought a plasma TV for no reason at all, because <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> without a warranty. <laughs> so I go to the dude. Uh-huh. He goes, "Yes." So I said, "What do you do?" Well, I'm I uh, market different ideas. Like I met the guy who owns the rights to uh, 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 what's the Skycam. Really? He owns Skycam. The rights to Skycam. The idea of Skycam is his. So when any news agency goes to the Skycam, he's getting a check. That wire cam that flies around the NFL. and it, 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 that, oh, Right, that he thing. He owns that. So I'm talking to guys like this. So Jesus. the guy goes, one guy goes, yeah, 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 market different ideas. I have an idea. We're marketing new water, um, marketed towards black people. And I go, oh, really? Huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I go, so 
I'm looking at him like waiting for his face to go, ah, just by this boom, for a tickle, tickle. Line or something. <laughs> Nothing. He's dead serious. So he goes, yes, we're thinking about calling it H2Yo. <laughs> Just and I go, I'll sue you right now, motherfucker. He looks at me, because I thought it was a joke. Right. He looks at me like, you, ugh, who invited this low-class motherfucker? <laughs> like it couldn't possibly be real. Like I go, yo. Are you joke? I, I, like, I kept looking at him sideways. You know how you talk to somebody and they say something, yeah. and you need somebody else to look at to go, is this, mother, is this nigga joking? H2Yo, did you just say? And he was dead serious. And that's who I was, oh. like, dealing with, man. It was just, un it was an unbelievable adventure. Yeah. Because those were the white people. When white people, black people talk about white people, that's that's them. That's them. It's not like just the average guy. Right, this, walking this on the street going to work or, or something. No, yeah. It's the guys like, you know, who make decisions in life. $20 billion, man. Michael Dell can't go broke. That have no clue what's going on he in the real world. He can't go broke. They said he's right. being sued by 40 people right now. It's just like he can't go broke. That's just business as usual, it's being sued by that many just, people. It, uh, unbelievable. It's like you cutting a check for, like, uh, the electric company or something. Yeah. You that's know. it. But, it was. But, it, I like the idea of H two Yo. I think that's actually H two Yo. Market. He's going market in Atlanta, and I'm like, and I'm sitting there going, man, are you? Are you I mean, are you serious, dude? Wow. And he's dead serious. Um, w w is there a problem with? Like, I'm doing jokes. This is these people. I'm doing jokes. Like, hey, uh, so what's with these goddamn Indians at the airport? Huh? These, I, I, I'm doing an Indian now, hacky, hey, double, 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 double day, and. And they're like looking like I, I I know this is supposed to be funny, but uh, and I go I look at him I go you I go, you mother y'all don't no one here flies regular <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they all they all fly Lear jets they're so rich they so don't they even know they don't understand. know what an airport is they don't understand what the inner workings of an airport you should have said That's something like funny. don't you hate when the caviar tumbles off the cracker. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it was it yeah. was an unbelievable night. And the wow. servant puts the salad fork on the inside. Hugla hugla hugla. And and it, and you, and it seems like to us right now it's like oh yeah that's that's, but it's like that. Yeah, it's really like that. What is it when you run out of toilet paper or anything anything human? They are, they, have, they have not a clue. Like Michael Dell will come up to me. He was like because they want to talk to a regular person and he was talking to me and I'm like listen do me a big favor. Don't try to be down to earth with me. Could you not do yeah. that? Can you allow? Can you just stay a some type of untouchable billion? Don't don't put it this way. Don't try to be my friend and not give me a million dollars. Right. If you're gonna play that shit, cut me a check. Exactly. Do not yeah. try to be down to earth with me like a regular guy. Can we hook you up with a free computer at least? Nah, man. I'm, I'm looking at one. what is that? No, it's not the water. It's just another H two Yo product. Uh. H2Yo. You mean he's going to be in court fighting for the name? But you know, it's you a know, cheap, 50 small, cent and effective um, uh, noisemaker. Vitamin water. You know, that's really? 50 cent. Really? Vi yeah, vitamin, the, the, you know, vitamin water. It's right? taking over the world, of course. That's, that's 50 cent. Wow. Like, he, he needs more money, too. He owns it. Wow. Jesus. Jesus. Well, you got to give it to him. I guess it works. Did I mess I hope I didn't mess it up for 50 where white people know they're drinking this water. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, money everybody gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One million spit takes <laughs> just happened. <laughs> what? All right, we got uh, we got some other things really fast. Uh, Anthony, we're doing this assault on the media contest. As long as you don't tell me Biz Markey owns Smart Water. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the contest is officially on. Uh, the month of July is the assault on the media contest. I think I saw one last night online. Yeah, that's the one I'm uh, gonna acknowledge yes. here. It's Buffalo Paul. He's in the lead. Yeah, a hardcore fan of the show, a pest. Loves spreading the virus in many, many ways in the mm -hmm. Buffalo area. He's he's a true pest of the Opie and Anthony show, Anthony. Uh, well, Buffalo Paul struck uh, WGRZ-TV in Buffalo, an NBC affiliate, early, I guess, yesterday. Uh, he executed a flawless assault on the media, they're saying. Yes, it was. I, actually, the video's up on Opie and Anthony. No one got fired either. He got a sign behind reporter Claudine Ewing. Photos and videos are up on Opie and Anthony.com. And the pest who pulls off the best assault on the media will win an XM MiFi and a whole bunch of other cool stuff from the show. We're still trying to figure that out, actually. We want to do concert tickets or something, but it's a national contest, so we got to figure out the prizes. But definitely a MiFi for the best assault on the media in the month of July. Mm -hmm. and Buffalo Paul is certainly in the lead, okay? I'm looking at it now, and look how he got the names in there, the faces. He moves the sign so you can see the uh, name. And Great job. And he's wearing a... 
official Opie and Anthony Spread the Virus t-shirt, yes, Anthony. Yes, he is. That you can get through uh, my brother. That was a great uh, assault. That link is also up on opianthony.com because my brother now has the pest t-shirts as well. So Yes, uh, Jimmy? <laughs> just, um, isn't that great? That's what our thing. That's We're... a fucking crazy man. Oh, that's yeah. a sign? Everybody, I, I saw that in the news. Like Everybody's like, Opie and Anthony. So Opie. annoying. Uh, dude, that's our, yeah, that's our thing. Pests. Our thing, just to be annoying pests. Somebody stole my satellite radio, so I don't even know anything anymore. It's they like, stole your satellite radio? Yeah, broke, broke it to my truck. It yeah. got Opie's, too. Yeah, they yeah. stole mine. It's a hot item, I guess, to steal. Jeez. What the hell are they going to do with it? It's subscriber-based. It's, it's like, like, you, like... They don't know what it is. They just see a little thing mounted. They figure it's it looks, right. I think they think it's a navigation system or something, because... <laughs> yeah. What can you really do with it if you steal it out of someone's truck? Uh, and then in other Opie and Anthony news, our old producer, good old Rick, has a new job. He oh, does. Right. And, and he's making the... Uh, the news and TV in uh, San Francisco. Oh. Uh, tsunami song producer to start Bay Area Morning Show Monday on Wild 94.9. Hmm. The morning doghouse got canned for making offensive comments, and there's an even more controversial uh, personality taking their place. At least there's not many Asians in uh, San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is he thinking? Jeez, he went to, like... Actually, it's Asian not, headquarters. Yeah, actually, it's not even his fault. It, you know, they they decide to hire him there, and uh, we wish him luck, obviously. But yeah, yeah. there's a huge. <laughs> I, oh, I didn't even think huge. about that. Giant San Francisco. Yeah. So San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. San yeah, that's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's. Yeah, they had to make him go all the way to San Francisco, man. Yeah, chased his ass all the way across what the country. He, what if he got kicked out of New York? Yeah. Which is, you know, the worst place you could be in terms of people and mm -hmm. what they'll deal with. He's went to OPC San Francisco. I know. Oh, they're, oh they're gonna love his friggin' gay songs and stuff. Oh, poor Rick. I'm so gay. I'm so gay. Remember that one? We love that one. With his AIDS references and everything else. Oh, they'll love him there. So a lot of controversy. I think he's just hoping that all the uh, people that listen don't have the strength to pick up the phone because they're having a bad day. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'd love to complain, but I'm just going to pet my dog and wait for my friend to come over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> little sharp hand in their lap. Oh, he's going to have oh. a good time in San Francisco. Oof. By the way, Clay and Mrs. Sippy wants in. Go ahead, Clay. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, I was just wondering if this H2O was going to be packaged as a 40. <laughs> Here we go. I can't believe that <laughs> yeah. a... <laughs> a stereotypical crack of voice would make a stereotypical... It's yeah. like, I want air as a 40. You I jackass. Can't believe. Are Don't you driving an Indy car while you're saying that, you dick? Dude, we got to get one caller from Alabama before you get out of here. God damn, let me tell you. God damn, h 2 yo. a 40. Oh, you make it sound like a good... you got to hear the real people from Alabama. Here's uh, one of Rick's songs, by the way. He's gonna oh, which in, one? He's going to be in the San Francisco market. <laughs> All right, San Francisco, here's what you can expect from our own Rick Delgado. Why y'all doing that? His voice, man? his words. Oh. We're all gangs, Dick and T. Welcome to Frisco. It's a great way to lose some weight on our way to Christopher's tree. Why don't you have him cancel his ticket to San Francisco? <laughs> Dead in days, legions all over my legions. face. Legions! Oh, Pound my eggs and grab some ADD. You can watch my life wither away on our way to Christopher's tree. <laughs> and how does it go? On our way to Christopher's tree. <laughs> Wow. Oh, my God. How do, you, how do you get past one verse? Right. Like, he's brainstorming. Wither away. Yeah, we lesions. I, I, in all fairness. I think he wrote down key AIDS key uh, phrases. Dude, in all fairness, I, I love that song. It makes no. us laugh a lot. Oh. But uh, we, we you just got him fired. Like, oh, you just got him picking. Oh, they are not going to play that when he gets there, I'm sure. <laughs> Somebody is drawing a pick sign right uh, now. Knowing Rick, though, he's the type of guy that will start the show, you know. He's with gonna, that. Is he going to be on the air or is he just producing? Or I don't know what the deal is, but he'll start with that thing and it's yeah. okay. Hey, this is great. <laughs> play this. But anyway, it's big news in San Francisco and in the radio community, and I guess uh, the news is all over in San Francisco. I got the story in front of me. Uh, so Rick Delgado, the twice-fired former producer of Opie and Anthony and Miss Jones in the Morning, will produce Strawberry in the Morning starting Monday 
Uh, at six. Del Strawberry in the morning. Oh. Delgado was the guy behind broadcasting a couple allegedly having sex in St. Pat's Cathedral. Really? So Miss Jones is going to San Francisco too? No, no, no. Just in, you know, they all copy each other. So he, like, I think he was saying that he's the former producer of Miss Jones' yeah. show. Oh, okay, is right. going to San Francisco. Okay. For sorry. the strawberry what? Strawberry in the morning. Oh, is that him? Strawberry in the bum rush. Oh, oh. strawberry's not even a chick. No, strawberry's a guy. Oh God! I was ready to say strawberry's hot. Thank God I didn't say that because there's mm. a, a chick in the picture. So I'm assuming she's got to be strawberry. Mm. Uh, let's see. Delgado was the guy behind broadcasting a couple allegedly having sex in St. Pat's Cathedral and the one who created a song that made fun of Asian tsunami victims. <laughs> now, that song was funny. Come on. Go find your mommy. Yeah, <laughs> everyone knows it now. A tree right through your head. <laughs> All they did was just list real facts. <laughs> right. Put it to music. There's a big old way. <laughs> the mistake he, the He's mis ready to drown you, and you can't breathe because you're underwater, <laughs> and your lungs are filled with stuff. <laughs> the, the, mis <laughs> the mistake he made was he had that song written, and, it, and the tragedy wasn't even 24 hours oh, old. Oh, the like, second dude, it happened. Wait a little while. Just go find your mommy. Oh. Child slavery. Oh. Oh, but, uh, what's a double-decker bus. <laughs> it just exploded. It just exploded. <laughs> in Liverpool Station. Screaming limeys coming out of the subway with blood on their faces. A uh, mommy left Christmas. <laughs> Just run, you limey, run. And, and, and Angelina Jolie is adopting all of those tsunami kids, by the way. Yeah, she's grabbing them all up. Jeez. Like they're going to be worth something. How about a black kid or something? Just something. Somebody, Help out. Somebody American, third world American. Get a, get a Puerto Rican. <laughs> you guys what is that, strawberry? Yep. Yeah, this gets a little more interesting. Uh, the story, okay, uh, station exec Kim Bryant tells a story that explains why she made this controversial hire. Oh, she has to explain herself. Because a lot of people thought that Rick was uh, not going to get hired. Unhireable, just like us. She explains. The, the story comes from Clear Channel executive, oh, Ed Cramp, whose father was hospitalized with a heart problem. Yeah. Cramp, because it's MPF, so I Cramp. Think, I think it's just Cramp. Cramp was the in the hospital room and say his own name. Cramp was in the hospital room and saw his father looking worse. He told a nurse, and the nurse said his father looked all right. Then his father went code blue and had to be treated immediately. The next day, a nursing supervisor told Cramp that they would have another nurse take over his father's care. But Cramp said no. He wanted the same nurse, the one who had learned his lesson to continue caring for his dad. Oh, I got you. So. So the guy that learned his lesson is going to do a better job because he learned that lesson. Because he learned his lesson than the guy, the new guy you bring in that oh. hasn't learned his lesson. I thought lesson. they wanted Rick to carry out his fucking his, his bedpan or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought they wanted Rick to write a song. He <laughs> <laughs> went code blue. <laughs> <laughs> breathe, you fucker, breathe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's it. Wow, that's very but profound. Joy Rick Delgado was, as he judges with his CD called Obvious. Uh, but then uh, it goes on here. Uh, that's an important story for all of us, said Bryant. This uh -huh. is Kim Bryant. The best person for the job may be the one who has learned from his mistakes. Mm. So says Cramper. It's a gutsy move by Bryant, the highest ranking female in local radio, who oversees 11 Clear Channel stations, mm. including blah, 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 Gosh. blah, blah, blah. Clear Channel hired Rick? Yeah. Wow. I wish uh, there was more women like that in the business. Yeah. Guys. That was that's yeah. pretty cool. I I, I can't, can't hate her for that. That's a good move, dude. I I applaud them. I give them credit. You know. I mean, did Rick, you guys Rick learn your lesson? Well, no. Well, no. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> people people think we learned our lesson because you know we're not sending people into church to have sex, but it's not even about learning a lesson. We're just as big a douchebags as we were then. But now we're just a little smarter. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll just get fired for some. We want, we want. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's I like, want at least the, you know, a little more a time where I'm getting a paycheck coming in. That's about it. Yeah. And then we'll blow it up. Because it's 2020. Oh my God! You can't really Hold on. Yeah. You can't figure out who's offended by what. Ah, of course. There's some Delgado quotes. Oh great! And he loves the spotlight, so he's loving this today. Brian says, Del says Delgado and the new show featuring local DJ Strawberry and Faye Carmona. 
uh, last in Miami, will be more community-oriented and listener-friendly than the doghouse, the show they're replacing, which she said got to be more about the host and the community. Uh-oh. In a surprising interview. <laughs> surprising. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Hold should I snap head. in? Hold should on. I snap in? I took my seatbelt off when I went to the bathroom. I think I should buckle in for Rick, one of Rick's comments. Rick was always known for his for his ridiculous quotes to the media. Remember how he described our show? That's legendary. Yeah. If you if you're not, not laughing in, in the first 20 minutes, then this show isn't, this show isn't for you. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. In the first 20 minutes? Thanks. We, have in, we have inside jokes that people that have been listening for two years don't fucking get. There are people that will finally start listening, uh, listening, start laughing, laughing. yes, two years later because two they, years finally, later, they finally get together. one of our stupid inside and then, jokes and then or movie realize references. how brilliant we actually are. <laughs> we make movie references no one understands until they see the movie a year later. Uh, 20 minutes, give him. Oh, Thanks, this, Rick. Yeah, this show is never about trying to hit him with a laugh right away. It's a, it's, it's a whole thing that goes on. It's a whole, it's, uh, dare I say it's a culture. It's an Opie and Anthony culture. Yeah. So here's a, uh, a surprising interview. No. <laughs> In a surprising interview, Delgado said he thinks he was misinterpreted and wrote a song that was only in bad taste but not racist, even though it used an epithet for Chinese people. Epithet. He, he said he won't do that again because... And I quote, I like their food and want to eat in their restaurants. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, see, see, he, he just doesn't learn. At least, sh at least wait for first day on the job. He's not even working yet. And listen to this. He also recalled that shock jock Howard Stern called him a scumbag. Oh, yeah? What? When did that happen? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know how much that says, he added. Is he remarked that Ben Sparks also called him the same thing? <laughs> yeah. On a daily basis? <laughs> hey, Rick got hired. <laughs> Come here. Ben and Steve obsessed with Rick. Absolutely obsessed. I don't know what he thinks he's going to do in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steve's probably gossiping already online. Oh, Chatty man. Cathy's all of them. Y'all are really silently getting uh. his boy's career destroyed. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's finished his hair. Nah, he'll be all right. We Bro love Rick. Yeah, I, I do like the kid. And but he, when the he first sissy, job. come on, when they play the tsunami and they oh, play this song, the Sesame Street gay song. Oh, it's over. Brian said he would be monitored closely to make sure it didn't happen again. And then Christine Chan, executive director of the National Organization of Chinese Americans, said her, <laughs> yeah. said her group will also closely monitor the show. Oh, <laughs> great. He's sunk. An Asian woman. You know, they have a great sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Where's his Asian, other song? Asian women are like which, which song? Kings I'm so the, gay. Uh, I'm so gay. I'm so. Yeah, I'm so gay. In the, in the That's old school. Oh, okay. Damn. All right, and then uh, I guess you could comment about Rick's hiring. Yeah. Because that that was an online article, and then you know you could comment about yeah. the articles uh -huh. you read. Of course. Uh, here's a couple of the comments. Clear Channel has some nerve to hire him in a market with a huge Asian population. Ah, there you go. He must have agreed to work for pennies, or Clear Channel is pretty darn desperate. As a 21-year-old male, I'm boycotting Wild 94.9. A 21-year-old male said that? He wrote no darn? No way. Pretty darn desperate? No way. No way that's a 21-year-old no. guy that wrote that. The next, uh, the next comment, uh, San Francisco will love Rick. He's just right for the people there. Oh, what does that mean? I don't know. But then the next one is the one making me chuckle. This morning show will be so good, I can't wait to tune in. Tell him, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. People are commenting. That's great. What in the world is 94.9 thinking? This is uh, preposterous and unthinkable with the horrid rap sheet that this guy has had. The Bay is home to diversity <laughs> and the appreciation of different backgrounds, oh, genders, oh, and oh, ethnicity. Oh, ethnicity. Oh. ethnicity. This decision will not only lead me to boycott the station, but to also tell other members of the Asian community to be aware of what has come about to this station. To the station. No one needs you. Bear in mind, Asians really don't have much of a pull. And they're not. Listen, they, they, they do go. not. I'm. I'm. That's what I couldn't understand from the, the Hot 97 thing. It's like, when did Asians get fear power? When yeah. did we start worrying about? When did about, that happen? Like, what did they buy? What, did, what, did, what do people market to Asians for them to destroy a show? Exactly, besides very small condoms. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking bowls for their hair to do. Sen stars Senator, masks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The only thing that Asians make me laugh is that when there's a, a Asian with an American first name and their regular last name, 
like <laughs> like uh, Jacqueline Wu, <laughs> like Arthur Chien, Teddy, <laughs> Teddy Cho, Line Peter, Three, Peter Cho. Line. Yeah, what's that all about? Teddy Cho, Line. <laughs> Oh my God! M- Marty Yang. <laughs> Marty Yang. <laughs> Let's go to Marty Yang for the story. I don't stop it. You know it's a white dad and an Asian mother. And yeah. I know what to lose all my culture. All right, we'll keep the last name. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Marty Yang. Hello. Yes, this is Marty Yang, and oh. I like to say what? Marty. Marty Yang. Stop it. Your name's Marty. Spell your name. Uh, two squiggle oh. lines. <laughs> <laughs> Four bricks and a question mark tied in a knot. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden they got like fear power. Where people now, you know, you got oh watch out, they're gonna boycott. Yeah, they're gonna boycott. I mean, not to say they can't make. I mean, they got they got people fired from the step, but uh huh. I mean, it's a lot of them, but they're not up there yet. Like no. the top, the top fear goes to Jews. I, I said you this think? before. I think I think black. I think black. Top I think black. Don't me- black is second. No, I think black is first. Absolutely not, man. Not in society. Ju- mm. People, Jews get you fired. Black people make you nervous, Black and they could get you, get you fired. You come off looking like a racist. It's worse than coming off looking like an anti semite. Absolutely not. No. I think so. No. In so. show business, I got to agree with Patrice. I'll tell you why. Because right. when you look at Marlon Brando. The Jews it, run the business? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, but Marlon Brando said it wrong, but what he was saying is every ethnicity has been stereotyped. The blacks, the Italians, everything but mm-hmm. the Jews. He's like, you never see that stereotype portrayed in films like you would black exploitation movies or The Godfather or Goodfellas. You never see that Jewish stereotype. I, I, would, I would have to agree and say that that's the most. You think if there were three Jews walking in Howard Beach and one of them got beat over the head with a bat, do you honestly think there'd be a, a, an outrage and uh, marches <clears throat> and Reverend Al different, type? Different kind of... It's it's like black pe- people people afraid of black people's um. You can markets. just stop right there. <laughs> they're, pl- they're afraid of our, our afraid of black our, people. <laughs> as a as a group, when we yeah. when we galvanize to to not like something. Come in the neighborhood. They're yeah. They're afraid of Jews in terms of. Oh, did he just say anti? There will. I think celebrities should be more afraid of Jews. Maybe maybe the average racist should be more afraid of black people. We'll give yeah. we'll give and take. We'll give. I think as far as uh, well, I, maybe I'm just thinking more on a personal level as far as radio goes. Let's say radio. You, you should be if more afraid of Jews than black people. No, I think I'm with Patrice. I think no. Yeah, you know why? Because a, uh, if there's a Jew that's in charge uh, of, of the radio station, let's say, mm-hmm. he will definitely take it as. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's just say there is. <laughs> You're being a, the CEO of this company. He, he will take what is being said, even if it's negative as far as Jews go, because it's working, it's getting ratings, and it's making money. Let's just say. But you're talking about the one, the one Jew who's making them. The I'm one that's <laughs> making the decision whether to pull the plug based on complaints. Like your Howard Beach thing, I think if you hit, like, like no one likes the curly Q Jews, the the, the ones with the coats <laughs> walking around. People just want to see them the get beat on top of their Q stupid Q top hats. <laughs> The Hasidic. The, the Hasidic. The Hasidic. Put the curly fries what? hanging from the side right. of the Hasidic. Yeah. On the top of the stupid Give me that dumb top hat. I, I think we keep going. We're going to find out what's worse. All right, you know what? But it's like, they, it's like, they, look, black, I agree. Black people in, in terms of, like, that's why, like, Abner Louima, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Amadou Diallo, this is why... Now, look, I tend to believe that those particular cases are worse than Rodney King. That's yeah. why I feel. Right. The, shot 41 times and the plunge in your ass. <laughs> but they're African and Haitian. Right. They're not, they don't, they ostracize themselves from black people. When black people be on, get on your ass, it's, it's serious business. But we get on your ass in terms of a social, in the street level. Oh, you did this to a black person, so a cop choked a black kid. So we're going to come after him, uh-huh. galvanize. But when it comes to this, it, show business or one guy saying something and they and his anti-Semitic put on it, you, you, you're done. But bl- blacks can get it in, in the news and keep shit in the news and pressure it over the long haul where you are, you know, you just whittle away at the bosses wherever you are. You only- and you wind up getting getting your ass thrown out of there for something you said. Or, the only difference with yeah. Howard Beach is I don't think that Jews being beat up would tap into that white guilt and I think that's ah. a, that's a big problem with 
with when because <clears throat> there's such a history like the, the, the liberal whites get so guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not blaming all liberals. I'm just saying that that, that white guilt comes out, and that's why because black people don't really fire you. They complain until the white people running it fire you. That's basically the way it is, and it taps into that white guilt. Well, look what happened. Uh, I, I think the, the black guy that uh, beat up Yankel Rosenbaum, he just got Remember out of Nelson. <laughs> yeah. Beat him up. He beat, beat up him, a Jew? Beat him Was up. this guy Yankel him. a Jew? Killed him. <laughs> Killed him. Well, he, he like beat, uh, they did make a, an Lemon error at the hospital, too, and uh, he wound up dying. They didn't find a stab wound for hours later. Oh, really? You know, so they were saying, yeah. he. Uh, he's, he's just complaining. That's he, what they do. Yeah, I, My side I, hurts. I, <laughs> I feel a pain. Oh, always complaining. <laughs> the man plunged the knife into me. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you're finding the stab wound. My shoulder hurts. Mm, gives me pain, but I don't want to complain. Jesus. Uh, it's just a stab wound. Uh, it's just a stab wound. Mm. But he, he just recently got out. And I think if it was the other way around and it was uh, uh, reversed, I think if a white guy was getting out of prison, you'd hear a little more about it. Like, why is this guy getting out? He killed a black uh, guy. You know, why? I think in those terms, uh, you get more flack from the black community. Really white guilt again, though, because Lemmerk Nelson's black. Well, Whatever the case like, is, you're this, getting less flack. Look at this thousand-year-old white boy they just now putting up for the Mississippi burning thing. The, the, yeah. It's like... What is that? Some some now, sorry see? Negroes. Here's a little something for you. A little something for you. Here's Here a little you something, Negroes. Here about, here Time about. to rejoice. Oh, praise Jesus. <laughs> they oh, locked them up. <laughs> they locked them up. They, they, lock they, they finally, Gene Hackman's is happy. William Defoe is happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did the movie for. That old guy. He lived his life. Oh, Who cares? He's 9,000. A 9,000 year old racist. Yeah. <laughs> he's Methuselah. a cantankerous old fellow. Oh. Isn't he? He, he, they're gonna Shaking his fist at the cameras. <laughs> you know those, those white, uh, the prison gangs? They're going to make him an honorary, the honorary, like, Buddha. Oh, uh, the head muckety muck. <laughs> <laughs> we got us a hero coming in today, boys. <laughs> What would you okay. have done in the 60s? Yeah. <laughs> this nigga stole my goddamn pack of cigarettes. What would you have done in the 60s? <laughs> We'd have burned that goddamn church down. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, What's this newfangled shanking you doing? <laughs> newfangled? What's this newfangled shanking? With a toothbrush, a sharpened toothbrush? Well, goddamn. We should have killed them goddamn oh. three civil rights workers with a sharpened toothbrush. Oh. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I love when they put him in front of, like, a woman, black, Asian judge, too. Oh. They get, like, where you know he's just sitting there going, My hand, my life is in this goddamn mixed-breed hands, goddamn. She gonna be the one send me off to prison? And you know he was he's so back in the 60s, he's like, All right, do you plead guilty? I'm Guilty. I did it. Of course I kept the niggas and them two nigger lovers. You see, I made a movie. <laughs> I was Michael Rooker. Remember the judge in Mississippi, Bernie? These were caused by outside influences. <laughs> we're not condoning them, mind you. <laughs> mind you. Oh. I played the Michael Rooker role. People think I was Stephen Dorff. <laughs> I wasn't. You'd kill, would you, Frank? I wouldn't think about it no more than I would snap at a cat's neck. <laughs> <laughs> this is a private social club. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my God. And ask them if they want to help save this country from the onslaught of, of integration. Oh. You know the system is they want to throw white children and colored children into the melting pot of integration through out of which will come a conglomerated Malata Mongol class of people. Both races will be destroyed in such a movement. I for one, <laughs> under God will die before I'll yield one inch. That's the That's the best. That guy has some passion. <laughs> and you know they're nodding their heads at each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, was, that was in 1965. It's like, okay, when did that stop? At what point it did. did did his children say to their children, hey, man, you can't be making yeah. speeches. It man. Did stop. Yeah. It's like people are thinking the same thing today. You just can't get up on a soapbox. <laughs> and, and you can't find a soapbox. 
to mind you. <laughs> Mongrels. Mongrel race. They changed change the word mongrel to rap music. <laughs> <laughs> rap music. Damn rap music. Rappers. A mulatta. Blatino race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, just horrible. Disgusting. There's more on uh, Rick. Oh, <laughs> they didn't they, how did we get there? Uh, that was actually Rick's clip. <laughs> He's writing a song about it. They did a uh, exclusive interview with uh, Rick. Conglomerated mongrel race. <laughs> Rick, uh, Rick never really talked. Rick never talked to the media after the tsunami song got no. fired. No. He, he gave the, this uh, newspaper an exclusive, exclusive. interview. Exclusive. You know the deal with the tsunami song. I'm sure even the new listeners heard the heard the controversy. Mm -hmm. Our old producer wrote a song uh, going out to the tsunami victims. Got, him, uh, got himself fired. In, ex in, in an exclusive interview with the Mercury News first reporter on MercuryNews.com, Delgado said his earlier actions were edgy but, but misinterpreted. Ah, of course. And added that he wouldn't change his act very much for the new station. That's good. Smart thing to say going in. Jesus, Rick. Smart. Shut Don't up. change. I'm not going to change. Yeah. Uh, sex in a church, uh, tsunami songs. Sure, why not? That's not what. AIDS songs. You got to learn your lesson in the end. You got to say, look, I screwed up. It went way too far. You know. Yeah. Or, or do what Aunt and I do. Don't say much. You don't say anything. And then once you get the job again and you're here for a while, then you say, ah, oh, we didn't care. We're not sorry. There you go. It was a matter of bad taste, like a blonde joke, <laughs> Delgado said, of oh, the tsunami song. Right. <laughs> He's comparing his tsunami song to, to blonde a blonde joke. joke. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. How many how many orphaned children does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> I don't know. Three hundred thousand. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh my. It's a blonde joke, sure. Oh, Same boy, thing. Oh now, boy. blonde jokes and tsunami jokes. Let's mm -hmm. see. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. You hear about the uh, blonde that uh, climbed a palm tree and watched her boyfriend drown? <laughs> no? <laughs> she owned it. <laughs> oh, when they saw that wave coming, I bet you the eyes got big then. <laughs> they opened right up those little slits. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, what's coming? Wow, another classic Delgado quote. It was a matter of bad taste like a blonde joke, Delgado said of the Tsunami song, which was set to the tune of We Are the World and made a joke of people dying in the December 26th Tsunami. Delgado mm. said the song was meant to parody a then-promised Tsunami song by Sharon Stone and Sharon Osbourne. His job is to say he won't be censored, but he will be, said Bryant. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, there's already tension because she's like... he. You know, the reporter called her and said, uh, this is what your new hire said. And now she's like, he, he said, what? What? He, yeah, what? He, what? Compared to oh, what? Well, his job is to say he won't be censored, but he will be. Oh, no, really? But, yeah, but in her head, she's like, what the f What is what, this what guy? Is he? is he? Rick. And then uh, she goes on, we are in it for the long run. We're going to protect our license, and we are here for the community and the listener. <clears throat> uh, the tsunami song, obviously, people got fired, Rick. How much uh, influence uh, did Rick have when he was working with you guys? On our show? I mean, oh, to you guys. Like, did you go, okay, that's funny, Rick, or did you go, like, could you go, Rick, beat it, I don't like that. Oh, beat or, it all the time. Yeah, like, all the just, time. Like, he just made decisions on what all you thought was time. funny. That's why, time. you know what, he should not have been fired for the Tsunami song. His job is to, you know, as a producer, is to hand in stuff, and then the host, whether it was Anthony and I at the time, or Miss Jones and, and that crew, yep. then it's up to her to decide, well, should we go with this or but not? Do all hosts have that, does she think she had that, that yeah, oh, John, yeah, Miss Jones. Hosts, That's why yeah. she's the biggest pussy in radio, and she <clears> will get destroyed now, because she has been, you know, made out to be a phony. She's a phony. <clears throat> she's an absolute phony. Rick shouldn't have been fired. She should have been fired. There's no producer that comes running over. Could you see a, a producer running over, shoving a CD in there, and hitting play without the host knowing that right. it's going to happen? You mean in taking charge? Not on this show. I can't. No, absolutely not. Right. Don't play this. She, she was all brave that hold day. You against the wall with his hog. <laughs> she was brave that day. Like she she uh, ah, back God. she backed that song and played it like it was hers, like it was hers, and even had a little rift with the Asian uh, person on the. Uh, what happened? <laughs> Just. <laughs> What ben, happened? Ben walking, ben <laughs> walking <laughs> into this studio this is hysterical. Is, he, is this kid black? He got, he got, we don't know what We he don't is. know what he is. He's like he that Seinfeld. Hair, He's this? like that Seinfeld episode. White boy with nappy hair. What the hell's wrong with him? I'm just a white boy with good hair. No, you're... But you have like... Yeah, you're, there's you're something going on where you yeah. got... You're 1% black. You have some black in you. Yeah. Something's going on. Yeah. yeah. Take yeah. you to Maury Povich. I hope you're a white mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're 1% black. Did you ever look back into your history? Your yeah. family history? Exactly. Um... 
They did look big. Did your grandmother like hip hop? <laughs> <laughs> they haven't found any black people, but they found Thomas Jefferson in there. So, well, are, are you serious? Yeah, sure to God. Yeah, so then, well, Jefferson's been known to. Wait, you're uh, related yeah. to Thomas off. Jefferson? You sure, it's Apparently. not George. <laughs> 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 Do you, you get anything for uh, being related to Thomas Jefferson? No, bragging rights. Yeah. Yeah. He's been known to knock off a couple of slave girls, though, in his day. That's what I've heard. They came forward and said that he was uh, doing that. So Yeah, it's obvious. You got so a little, I you think got a if, if you, you got some Thomas Jefferson in you, wow. I think something was going on there. You happy about that, you little coon? Lucky me. <laughs> uh, you, little, you little moon cricket, huh? Porch monkey. Do you get invited to the picnic every year? <laughs> there's, a, there's like a Thomas Jefferson picnic every year. Yeah. I, I know. No, well, no. What uh? Any other family members with that hair? Uh, I got yeah. I have an uncle. An his uncle, hair, just like me. Tom, my mom. <laughs> no, Hank. Uncle Hank. Yeah. And he's got the same hair as you. He but did. everybody else has straight hair. Uh, my brother's hair is curly, but not like mine. Like yeah. Loose. You curly. got big dick. Uh, yeah. It's a good yeah, size. Just wondering if that scrawny dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Scrawny guy. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're ru we're running out of show. We want to just wrap this up so we can move on. So uh, so Brian had to defend you know Rick's comments in the paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, people got fired. It was meant to be a bad, uh, bad spoof of celebrities and telethons. Delgado said, my job is to put stuff out there and see what gets a reaction. Hopefully, people will get a kick out of it. Yeah, he got a kick right on his ass. And then, uh, the door. And then they talked to this Asian lady you know, that, that runs the Asian uh, group out there. And she's mm -hmm. like, the use of race, racial slurs is simply unacceptable, no matter what oh, boy. one's ethnicity is. And Delgado, who is of Spanish and Puerto Rican descent, said he thought racial humor was still acceptable. So long as the person making fun of a race is of that race. Oh, What's no. What's your favorite racial Ray. slur? Mine? What's your, just the best racial slur? Just, I think Gook is, I, I'm, I'm just thinking Gook <laughs> is the funniest racial slur. Gook is a right funny now. one. That's a nice <clears> one. <throat> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm sure not ain't the one I this. use the most. <laughs> you know, I find Gook funny, but the one I use the most... Yeah, when I'm driving and I'm cut off. You yeah. guys, you guys schooled me on this uh, producer. I thought producers had uh, nah, power. No, they not don't. at all. I like to call somebody if they don't do what I want, like a lazy Keith. Ah, there you go. <laughs> we only got a minute left. We got to get this live read in for hey, uh, for Paisano. Like the song says, you'll love Paisano. It's a great oh. restaurant right in the heart of Little Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I, you did Try Paisano of, of Mulberry Street. Huge portions. Joey feeds us all the time, you freaking uh, Paisano <laughs> in a classic candlelit restaurant. Perfect for a late night date or a romantic meal. Every yeah. single pasta. Joey's on the menu canceling his is advertising. Now under ten dollars. At Paisano, mention XM for free and a glass of wine, and you get a oh, you get a glass of wine for free yeah, if get, you mention XM Radio. That's right. Authentic Italian cuisine made from original old world recipe and the fun and romance of Italy in a friendly restaurant. That's Paisano. Open weekdays till two a.m. Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy between Grand and Hester. Call 212-965-1188. That's 965-1188. And get a free bullet while you're eating with Salazzo. <laughs> <laughs> we love Paisano Phenomenal. on Mulberry Street. And he's got the tables out on the sidewalk now, so you can do a little peep. Can I come eat Joey? Hey, hey. Yeah. hey. You come might want to sit inside. <laughs> sit inside. Sit inside. <laughs> inside. Nice at tables <laughs> inside. <laughs> hey, you want the eggplant? <laughs> Patrice tonight, by the way, with <laughs> Boss like and Bonnie. That. I like Oh, yeah. At Caroline's uh, Patrice. O'Neal, I'm definitely oh, yeah. going down. So. Yeah, 12:30 tonight or yeah, something like that. And, and tomorrow, Patrice. Nice. And Sunday, 10 o'clock. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you, gentlemen. And, See you um, Monday.